Hi everyone, it's Hannah. I hope you all had a lovely Easter break. The g and team are back for another dose of sewing inspiration, so we hope you enjoy. Um, just want to let you know what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Merchant Mills Florence top in a lovely lightweight cotton. Um, check out our website, we've got quite a few nice lightweight cottons at the minute, which would be great for it. Um, so just to recap on something that somebody asked from last week, we showed the lovely bamboo blended twills and we said they'd be great for trousers and someone was just asking for some pattern recommendations. Um, so my favourite for these are the assembly line high-waisted trousers. I've got two pairs of these in the bamboo twills and they are the comfiest things ever. Um, but then if you're not into the wide-legged kind of style, we have also got the Mitchells would be really nice in the tapered version or even the, the wide leg version and the True Bias Danny trousers would be great for them as well. So someone else has asked for some fabric recommendations for this Style Arc Harriet jacket. Um, if you're not sure what that pattern is, it's just like a little boxy crop jacket, um, which is perfect for this kind of time of year because you never know what the weather's gonna do. Um, we think the Ramis would be really good for it. Um, it's very similar to a linen, but it has got this lovely texture up to it. So really nice for jackets. So we've also got some lovely cotton twills that we good for it as well. Um, we used these for our Ilford kits a few years ago. Um, again, nice and lightweight, but also the whole the structure of the boxy shape. Um, and these come in quite a few different colours, so there's a lot to choose from. So um, we've recently had in the new spring summer Fabric Godmother collection of fabrics. Um, there's a mix of more graphic prints and then some floral prints. And we've just picked a couple to show you today that we think are just really nice. Um, so this one is the Maggie Viscose Crepe. Um, so it's got a lovely texture to it and it's got this really cool retro floral print. So it'd be really great for blouses, some like nice swishy dresses, anything really. It's just a lovely print for the summer. So then if you're not quite as confident with sewing viscose, we have also got a few cotton lawns. Um, this is the Melissa floral, um, which we've had in, in the past in a few different colourways. But this is a really nice blue one for the spring. Um, it'd be really great for shirts, that kind of thing. Or if you, as I said, if you're more of a beginner, it's great for that as well. Hi, I'm Rosie. Today I'm wearing the Olya shirt from Paper Theory in the... Atelier Brunette uh, Double Gauze Gingham, which is currently in the sale. The colours I'm wearing are the Matcha Green and the Divine Palmer on my cuff, which I'll show you. So last month's Sewing Society kit was the Billy Trousers, which I've got here. Um, we've still got plenty of those kits available. This is the fabric that we used. We're now selling it by the meter. It's a lovely soft needle cord. I've picked out three really good patterns that you can make with the needle cord fabric. Um, first of all, the Thayer trousers. Um, we do keep talking about them, but it's because they're so good and they'd be perfect in a needle cord. Also, the Clio by Tilly and the Buttons. Um, it's like a dungaree dress. You've got two length options. Um, and we also sell the Kylie and the Machine dungaree kits. So you can get the little dungaree buckle and the buttons. So that would look great with the fabric. Or finally, the Thayer jacket. Um, we do this in two sizes, the 0 to 18 or the 14 to 30. It's just a really standard versatile jacket with a collar and a back yoke. Um, and in this sort of fabric, which is a little bit more lightweight, it would be a nice springy jacket. So we've had a customer question. Um, this is the fabric that Lauren showed in one of her recent videos. It's the marine stripe quilted wave cotton fabric. And we have a customer who's making a lovely little child's jacket in this fabric and has asked how we would finish off the seams. So it's not a very thick, it is quilted, but it's not a very thick fabric. You've got two options. I would probably just overlock the seams um, for a nice neat finish. I don't think it would make it too bulky. Um, if you don't have an overlocker or you like a really neat finish, then you can bind the seams. So this is the marine stripe cotton fabric, obviously a really lovely match and you can make your own binding out of this if you wanted to, um, to bind the seams. If not, then just a simple bias binding would work really well. Finally, I want to say thank you for all your orders. Um, we've had loads over the bank holiday, we really appreciate it. Um, thank you in advance for your patience while we're all working hard to get them sent out to you. Because of the no post on bank holidays, there has been a, a slight delay with getting them posted, but they're now on their way. So hopefully you'll have them very soon. Hi guys, I'm Becca. 
Um, so I know first off, you always want to know what we're wearing. So I am wearing a Jarrah sweater from Megan Nielsen, um, which has got the cute little tie feature. And uh, I did a little facing on this as well, which if, you, if anyone bought the Jarrah kits or has had a Jarrah Sewing Society video, then you'll see how you can do a little facing on that little top tip. Um, and this is in, uh, it's like a cotton linen jersey. So if you look at, well, it'll be linked below, but it's like Ecru, um, flex cotton linen jersey with with a slight like loop back texture to it uh, like a french terry um, basically that's what this is in so yeah nice spring kind of weight um, so today is the first wednesday of the month which is always a very exciting day here at guthrie and garnier because it's the launch day for our sewing society kits so um, we did the launch a little bit early we're filming this in the afternoon now so the kits are starting to to um, get sold which is really exciting so we've had um, two different kits we've got our um, young power bag which are these little lovely bags over here so it's like a cross body bag with an adjustable strap so you could wear it on, on your shoulder if you wanted or across the front and um, they've got a little top cover like that some lovely pockets inside as well we tested them out as well you can get a nice big phone in there and your keys and everything so actually quite roomy and um, it's got piping in it it's got foam inside so it's like slightly squidgy it's this special like fabric foam um, that you you put inside um, each section and then around the edge as well so lots of really nice techniques in there and um, we did a slightly different version so the pattern is by a company called Niso Craft and you can find their patterns on Etsy if you missed out on getting a kit and we did a slightly different version where we omitted the front cover and we put a little slip pocket in the front instead like that so you can just slip your things in there and that's slightly simple because we didn't do the piping in that one as well to make it a bit more of a straightforward make so that's the young power bag and then we've got the strata top from so liberated um, so it's a really nice, simple shape. Um, we've got a bias bound neckline. There's just, with the actual pattern, there's just three peak pattern pieces that come with it. We've got the front, the back, because it's got grown on sleeves here, and then the bias binding for the neckline. And then if I like a little extra in the video that comes with the kit, we show how to put a facing on the hem and how to draft that which just gives a really nice feature there. And it's something you can put on loads of other patterns. Or if you were doing something like making a pair of trousers that we were turning out a bit too short and you want to try and preserve hem length, put a facing on it. So it's a handy little tip to know how to do in your arsenal. So um, yeah, we've had those in two cotton gauzes, which have got this beautiful little rainbow stripe in them. So a white and a navy. And then this one is like a dead stock fabric. Um, that we got which is a cotton and viscose mix and it's got little open weave sections and these flowers woven into into them that one's my favorite I really like that one so um, by the time this video goes out to you there might still be some kits available but if there's not then you can always get the videos separately and so you know if you've got the wherewithal to make the kit maybe you've bought different fabric or maybe you already own the pattern then you can still always buy Lauren's video separately and kind of use the tips and everything that come along with those. Um, so if the, by the time you're watching this, if the uh, kits have sold out, but you love the fabrics, I especially love this coral one on the bag, it's my favorite, um, and you really, really want some, sometimes we have bits left over, it really depends on what fabric we've got that month. So if you love it, then please just email the shop and they can let you know if there's anything left over and then put you on a waiting list. So we've had a question from someone who's making the Amalfi blouse by Massin Patterns and they're asking about um, interfacing for the placket. So it's got like an all-in-one placket, I understand, that goes round here and down um, and that's all cut in one. And they're asking about how important keeping the grain line is for the interfacing, I think because they're trying to conserve on fabric and things. Um, so basically with interfacing, it can often be there to add a little bit of extra structure or support um, and in this instance I think that's you know that's why it would be included to put a bit extra support around there and for where your I think the pattern's got buttons on where the buttonholes are going to go and um, sometimes you might also use it to stop an area stretching out 
So for example, in the billy kits that we did, we made sure that we used the interfacing on the grain for the waistband um, to help support the fabric and stop it stretching out because it had some stretch in it and we didn't want the waistband to stretch. So basically interfacing along the grain, so this is a piece I've got here, along the grain, it's got less give. If I pull on a bit there, this is really lightweight, but you can see it's not really stretching there. But if I, give it a little tug on the cross grain, it does have a bit of give to it. Um, so if I was using it for something like, like this placket that this customer's describing, then I probably wouldn't worry too much about making sure I cut with the actual grain line um, because I'm not necessarily trying to stop that area stretching out. You know, it's not an area that's gonna be under a lot of pressure like a waistband would be. Um, but I would still make sure that I'm, I at least cut it on the cross grain because you've got extra stretch if you know something's on the bias. So I'd say it's not as important, but do make sure that you're still using the cross grain if you're not using the actual grain line itself. So we've had a question about the Mariflex thread. So this is Mariflex thread, which I find quite difficult to say, uh, Mariflex. So it comes on these little orange spools. It's made by Gutterman. And basically the special thing about it is that it's got stretch in the thread. So can you see there that it's got a quite a bit of give in it as I'm pulling on it. So basically when you're sewing with it, you can just use um, a straight stitch on your machine. Um, Sometimes though, because someone's asking, do they need to use a zigzag stitch at all or a lightning bolt stitch? So when um, Lauren made one of the Dawson tops, which had a very close fitting um, mock neck to it, she did need to use the Mariflex with a little lightning bolt stitch just to give that extra stretch. Because obviously it's got a lot of stretch built into it, um, but sometimes you need super stretch. So by doing like the combination of both, it did allow um, this quite tight fitting neck to be able to stretch on and off over her head. Um, sometimes when, if you're trying it out and you're finding you're not getting a lot of stretch when you're just using your straight stitch and it's a bit that's not, doesn't need to be super stretchy, then you might need to lower your needle tension down a bit um, and you could also try lengthening your stitch length as well. Those are two things that uh, Gutterman recommends to do when using the Mariflex. So we've had a question asking for um, a cuffing or ribbing recommendation for this lovely sweatshirt we've got here which is our mild chambray alpine fur back sweatshirting. So it's got a really nice soft fuzzy back to it. Um, like pretty good stretch, but someone's asking for something to use, I guess, on neck bands and their cuffs. So we don't have an exact match, unfortunately, but I've chosen a few things that I think could work quite well with it. So I think you'd want to go for um, a contrast would be quite nice. So I've got a few here. So this one, which I think is probably my favourite, is our denim recycled cotton tubular ribbing. Um, and that's got like quite a nice mild um, sort of effect to it, which kind of mirrors what's going on in the fabric there. So I think that would be quite nice. Or you could have a white maybe for like quite a fresh spring look. This one is our off-white organic tubular ribbing. So again, that just comes on a roll. You can buy it by the meter um, and it comes in a tube like that hence the name. Or we've got separate cuffing as well, which comes in little packs like this that you can unroll. Um, so that might be quite a good match as well. But I think that's quite a nice sort of like tealy colour that brings out the blue. Bye. 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 See you next week. And if you've got any questions you want us to answer next week, then just leave them in the comments below.